Did you look up into the air to see the Bunny Grim Reaper float down like Mary Bloody Poppins and blow your head off with a revolver made out of teeth? And then think to yourself, damn, I want some of that. Well then stick around as I go through my ultimate guide to playing Androxus. First off, let's have a rundown of his abilities. His left click is simply called Revolver, which pretty much sums up what this gun does. It's a classic 6 shooter, each shot does 620 direct damage maximum to the body and has a headshot multiplier taking the maximum damage to 930. The damage does drop off at around 60 in-game units and can hit at a maximum of 300 units. If you want to see what that looks like, then head on down to the target practice zone where the skies are and look at the wall, it's basically got all the numbers along it. In general though, you'll want to shoot within 60 units which is like 5 or 6 meters to the eye and you'll often find yourself closing in on enemies to keep in the range of the maximum damage and to ensure that you can get some headshots. One quirk of headshot weapons in Paladins as of OB38 is that the headshot multiplier does not change, it's always the maximum damage. So in Droxus case you get 310 extra damage on each headshot which added to his minimum damage, which is 188, means it's almost close to 500 damage, and a headshot at this range will increase damage output by more than double a shot. And this is something that really makes Androxus rewarding to a player with good aim. Personally, I find this most useful when you're putting out damage on tanks you don't really want to get close to, but are pretty immobile on a point and more vulnerable to those headshots. Although headshots are important, sometimes the extra damage isn't needed. For example, a Sky only needs to be headshot once to make the kill a 3 shot rather than a 4 shot. Obviously, this is before Haven is taken into consideration and the distance of shooting. However, the problem with going only for headshots is that although Paladin's hitboxes are fairly generous, the head hitboxes are the least generous, and heads seem to be one part on on the body which is actually pretty much to the model and for example if an enemy is in an animation you can even miss the headshots go to the practice zone and try and shoot the fernando whilst he's moving around his head actually moves and the hitbox actually moves with it so for the most part i would advise aiming roughly where the head is but always correcting slightly lower in case you start missing getting the headshots will often be the decider in duels if you're against another good player and Androxus is one of the champions I would advise going into the target practice zone and going through all of the skies and practicing your aim before playing. My routine is going between them all and trying to connect consecutive headshots, first standing still, then strafing and moving like I would in the game. It isn't perfect, but it is a good warm up, especially if you're more serious about the game. Obviously, if you're just having fun, don't bother. Androxus right click is called Defiance. This fires a burst round of three shots from the revolver. The first shot doesn't have a cone of fire, but the other two will spread randomly. Randomly. These three shots fire at a rate of 0.4 seconds or 1.2 seconds for the whole thing and each one does 300 damage. You can get headshot bonus damage which is 150 for each shot plus you get 500 extra damage if you hit all of the shots. Now let's do the math. 450 times 3 equals 1350. Add that 500 on equals 1850 total damage from those three shots. And that is the maximum damage you can do over 1.2 seconds. And now take three headshots from the normal left click, which is 930 times 3, which equals 2910 damage over 1.5 seconds. Any way you slice it, the normal revolver can perform better. You will mostly hear people refer to this ability as trash, and as of OB38 or Open Beta 38, it pretty much is. The one time it might be useful is if the enemy is on almost zero health, they use their mobility, and you need to fire slightly quicker and fire in more of an area, then it could be an option. In actual games, the situation happens once in a blue moon, and is often when I'm frustrated with shooting a mobile target, and even then with the spread, it has a chance to completely miss too. Androxus' escape ability is called Nether Step, and what this ability does is it allows you to dash or step three times in the direction you're facing into the air. Between each step there is a four second period to step again, but once either all three steps are used or the four seconds runs out, the cooldown will be 10 seconds. Because the ability lasts for the duration of the three steps, you can accidentally step twice and effectively increase your cooldown by four seconds. It's worth making sure you've used all three and aren't blocking yourself from that next escape. Worth mentioning at the same time is that Androxus passively floats like a feather to the ground called Drift, and in combination with the three steps you can use it to glide great distances and practically fly around the map, and in some ways more elegantly than Drogos can with his jetpack. This weightlessness often is great even if you don't have nether step, but jumping from an elevated point on the map or cover to glide above your enemies will make you harder to hit and get them from where they're not expecting you. 
Back to Nether Step, this ability has a few uses. Firstly, it's great to get up and above sniping spots where you expect a Kness or a Shaolin to be, so you can easily get an easy kill on a Squishy. But also, generally, it's great for getting behind your enemies and onto high ground they don't expect you from. It secondly is a great escape if you're struggling to take down an enemy or find yourself dueling more people than you expected. As you can delay the jumps, you can jump into a building and around the corner on the other side quite easily with the maximum distance. I often find myself jumping into a wall by accident, so make sure you map out where your escape routes are so you don't miss the corner in a quick dash. So playing and learning the maps is quite important with Androxus. Finally, the nether step can help you win a duel by making it harder for your enemy to aim. If you use one step, shoot, repeat, and you often can completely throw the enemy's aim off. As you are in control of where you are moving, you have the slight upper hand of knowing where to turn to return the fire. There is a card to heal you whilst you're in nether step, which can also tip the balance in jewels, but I'll talk about that later as I go for the car build. The Q ability is called reversal and this creates a barrier in front of you which absorbs the damage of most enemy attacks and can return 75% of damage in a blast back at your enemies. This is one of the most satisfying abilities in the game when it goes right, as you are basically letting the enemy kill themselves by attacking you. Some tips for this ability are that the projectile moves rather fast, and isn't very large so it's pretty hard to hit with. Personally I find aiming at the enemy's body and strafing or moving to aim will often get me the hit, whereas it's trying to aim with the mouse too much can throw you off. It is something that you'll just have to get used to in the game. Obviously a reversal on a Drogos flying in the air will need you to aim more with your mouse though. Drogo's spit combo is also something that can be thrown back to great effect with its normally devastating damage. Shaolin's Q ability can also be thrown back, but you'll need to strafe slightly as the Shaolin lockdown is longer than your return ability lasts. So abilities will also be able to go through a shield if they normally pierce shields like Drogo's One Punch ultimate, but returning another Androxus ultimate for example can be a devastating option. You can also use reversal to cover allies if they are on low health, but it's only really useful to last it shield your tank who needs to stay alive. This ability is extremely important in my build, as a card that allows it to refresh nether step if you successfully return a projectile, but again I'll come to that later on. Some pitfalls of reversal are that it doesn't cover your back and enemies, especially Eevee who can teleport behind you, will go for your vulnerable soft behind. The cooldown is pretty massive at a whopping 16 seconds, also better players will simply wait out your reversal to go off and not fire at you. This especially hurts the card build as you require sending a blast at someone for you to escape. Sometimes it is best to get in front of fire and try to absorb any stray bullets intended for your allies if they won't focus on you. Something worth mentioning is there is a slight delay before you bring up the barrier, so I would advise not standing still thinking you are safe straight away. Reversal is also a little buggy as of OB38 and occasionally lets the odd projectile through. Because of all of these issues, I'd advise using Nether Step as your first line of defense and to escape with from enemies and only use it if that is on cooldown. Finally, the Accursed Arm is Androxus Ultimate, which turns your arm into some Cthulhu tentacle monstrosity which launches 4 projectiles, each dealing 1000 blast damage. This can be used to devastate teams, collect on a point, or to decimate single important targets. It's also great because when the enemy team picks Haven to counter the rest of your damage, which is direct, meaning all of the blast damage from the ultimate will go through unmitigated unless they have blast shields. Whilst activated, you hover and it's great in combination with Nether Step to get into the air and then to rain hell down upon your enemies. The only problem is that enemy players will hear you Nether Step and then the ultimate activation, and whilst you hover, you are much easier to hit. Sometimes it's best to get behind enemies and just fire down from cover when they don't expect it. Another problem is that most tanks have a shield and will block your ability, or even if it stops one shot, it will likely save them as they have bigger health pools. I would advise using the ability to mainly pick off squishier enemy champions or tankers if they are in low health. Sometimes if the target is an enemy player that is destroying your team, it could be worth just using it on them to ensure a kill. It's also one of the best ultimates in combination with other damage like a Bomb King ultimate to finish everyone off, or a Pip ultimate to destroy all the chickens quickly. It's also worth saving for the siege rounds with a point capture as it is best against groups of enemies. But personally I find there is hardly ever a perfect moment so if you have a chance to take out two squishy damage dealers or a low tank, it could be worth it. So onto the main build that I currently use, and you can import this if you search Joshino and it's called Joshino Main. First up is Power of the Abyss. This card reduces the cooldown of Nether Step if you hit an enemy with reversal, and at level 4 it reduces the cooldown by 100%, meaning you're able to practically use Nether Step twice as an escape if you hit with the ability. This works combined with Seething Hatred, this card reduces the cooldown of reversal if you hit enemies with your revolver. At level 2 which I use, each shot reduces the cooldown by 1 second, and this is important as reversal has a long 16 second cooldown, and it also rewards good aim the most. 
third up is Abyss Walker, and this card heals you on each step of the Nether Step Escape. At level 4, this is 160 at each step, a total of 420, which is almost a quarter of your health. Which, if you're able to use two of these nether steps when you get the reversal hit, it'll practically heal you up to half of your health in total. Often enough to win jewels or live to escape in clutch situations. Sleight of Hand is a card that gives you ammunition when used nether step, and I have it level 1 which gives you 3 rounds, and this is because combined with buying time 1 which gives you 3 rounds when you use reversal, and between the two abilities you can have a fully loaded weapon, and as I mentioned with the other cards, you'll often be using both of these abilities in quick succession. This is especially important as well, so using nether step or reversal, you're unable to reload, so it allows you to keep firing without taking a time out for extra bullets. This build definitely needs some practice as it relies on both you hitting your revolver shots to reduce the cooldown of reversal, but the most hard part, hitting the reversal shots to get another nether step. So let's have a look at the rest of the cards. So on the note of reloading, there is quick draw which gives you 5, 10, 15 or 20% reload speed. This could be a standalone option to reduce reloading times instead of getting two cards which give you rounds back when you use your abilities. And this can also be combined with Deft Hands in game to further increase the speed at which you reload. However, personally I do feel regenerating ammunition from thin air is better and it costs a lot to get it to really, a really noticeable reload speed. There's also Marksman 4 which will generate 1, 2, 3 or 4 ammo if you hit all 3 Defiance shots. As Defiance is so underpowered, I don't think it's a great choice, however Defiance, unlike the other abilities with cards attached to them, can be spammed almost all of the time. Vengeance gives 5, 10, 15 or 20% lifesteal on your Defiance right your right click, and the problem like I mentioned earlier is the damage output of the right click isn't great, and that would mean not great healing also. You would need to spam Defiance to make it useful, but that would also mean that you do less damage in general. Personally, as of this patch, OB38, this card isn't great, but if they do buff the right click or your aim isn't great, then it could be an option for some healing. Spite is another Defiance card which gives you 3, 6, 9 or 12% extra move speed for every shot hit with Defiance, which sounds great on paper, but as Defiance stand, you won't be using it enough to benefit from this move speed. Along with Abyssal Touch, which gives you 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75 and 1 second reduction to Nether Step on each shot hit, which, with Nether Step on a 10 second cooldown, would take over one magazine to regenerate, and this is with all the hits meeting their target. And with knowing the random cone of Fire Bloom makes it a difficult task indeed. Disrupt reduces reversal cooldown by 1, 2, 3 or 4 seconds at each level, and this card could be used in the Reversal Hit Nether Step deck to further reduce the cooldown but as it stands, if you have good aim, Seething Hatred can be the better at getting Reversal back up. Also, you would need to invest into the high levels to make it really worthwhile as Reversal's cooldown is so long anyway. Featherweight increases your air control whilst drifting, and this is a fun card, but unlike Drogos who has no range drop-off and always wants to be in the air, you're at a disadvantage whilst flying with you doing less damage. Personally, I don't think it does enough to make it into my deck, but could be used just for fun builds, and if you're flying around all of the time. Patience increases the time between dashes by 1, 2, 3 or 4 seconds at each level, and this card gives you more control over your nether steps, however at the same time, it effectively increases the cooldown of a full 3 step escape. I could only see this card being used with through the warp and this card increases the distance of nether steps dashes by 10 20 30 and 40 percent at each level meaning your dashes go further and are slightly better at getting around and escaping for a while i used this card instead of seething as my aim wasn't the best and it had a noticeable jump advantage but it isn't a huge one Equivalent Exchange makes it so that you heal for 10, 20, 30 or 40% of the damage absorbed by Reversal. Enemies that completely stop firing at you when you bring up Reversal, also Reversal has the longest cooldown of the abilities. Finally, the Nether Step heal on, is on a shorter cooldown and will likely match what damage you can take in your Reversal and go well above the first two levels of this card. Finally, Watchful makes it so that when you headshot an enemy, you reveal them, meaning you can see their tag even when they're behind a wall and when they are invisible. That's for 1, 2, 3 or 4 seconds at each level, and the problem with this card is that there are currently only two stealth characters, Sharlin and Sky. Both of these champions are pretty hard to headshot, and for all the other champions, as Androxus, you can get into the sky easily with Nether Step and can often see everyone anyway, so vision isn't a massive problem. I can see it being useful if you're a great shot, increasing the vision for your whole team, but probably not enough compared to the other options. Items are usually situational in the game and you need to pick to counter the enemy lineup and their choices, but briefly here are my favourites for Androxus and the ones I don't really use. First up on defence, you probably won't want to get resilience because you shouldn't be in the action too long before another stepping away, and if you are getting hit by crowd control effects it's probably your movement that is out of whack. 
Illuminate isn't that useful either for the same reason, and there are two invisible champions at the moment, but with Nether Step you should be able to chase down both Shaolin and Sky to keep them close enough to be visible. Flash Shields and Haven, depending on who the enemy picks, are always a go-to at the moment, and will likely be your first pick. Most blast damage champions do find it harder to hit you as you float in the air, so Haven is often better, especially if they have a Victor or Ruckus. Utility, uh, Master Riding is cheap and great for flanking enemies and getting quickly to high cover so you can float down and behind people, and this is usually my go-to choice. Morale Boost is another good pick on Androxus because of how good his ultimate can be. Nimble is so-so as you have okay movement speed and are mobile because of your nether step, so it isn't normally something I would pick. Kronos' 400 credits is quite hefty to upgrade, and personally with the nether reset build I use I don't worry about cooldowns so much, so if you have another build it could be an option to reduce nether step and reversal which have pretty big cooldowns. On healing, kill to heal can be a good heal as you are often involved in eliminations. Rejuvenation isn't that useful on Androxus as you'll be flanking a lot and you won't be near your healer enough to benefit from it. Veteran can be very useful as you have a great escape to get away and wait for the regeneration to kick in and then rejoin the brawl faster. Life Rip however is my usual choice and Androxus does do a lot of damage and in a short space of time. You're also often dueling single targets face to face and this is where getting back your health in little chunks can win you the duel. Especially when you're mitigating their damage with Haven or Blast Shields so you need less to save you from a short death. I don't usually get this unless I'm dueling enemies a lot, like another Androxus in Casual or Cassie. Bulldozer is pretty meh, you do a lot of damage to champions and you may as well try to burst them down instead of their deployables. Corduroys can be quite useful if the enemies have a lot of healers or lifesteal champions, but you aren't as good as a say Victor or Ying or Grok who can constantly fire and spread it over lots of heroes. Wrecker is great against Ruckus because it will amp out your damage when they put up their shield emitter, and against a Fernando who needs his long lasting shield taken down, but against a Makao or a Barrack I would simply flank or get inside their shields and not bother. Deft Hands can increase your theoretical damage and can be useful if you don't have those bullet generating cards, but is expensive and Cauterize or Wrecker can do more situationally. I often get it only in really long games where I haven't bought an aggressive item already and I've maxed my defense. Aggression sucks, unless it's buff post OB38, don't get it, don't think I need to spell that one out. So with the abilities, cards and item choices out of the way, final thoughts on Androxus is that he is a pretty fly champion. He made it into my top 5 champions to play because of his highest skill ceiling with aim being important, but also he has a lot of mobility especially with my main car build. So, so if you're looking to play a relatively challenging but rewarding champion, Androxus might be the pick for you. He definitely has one of the coolest designs in the game too, both in the voice acting, bask in my twilight, and the demon arm meets bunny horned grim reaper. A lot of the most viewed paladins youtube videos by the mega youtubers, they refer to him just as McCreeper, a blend of reaper, McCree and overwatch, but that doesn't do justice to the character he actually is. I'd say he's more of a goth that's a little too into his tentacle anime. <clears throat> anyway, that was Androxus. Was this guide helpful at all, or do you have something to add from your own experience playing him? Will you start playing Androxus more now, or has it made you more curious about trying him out? Be sure to let me know in the comments section below. If the video never stepped its way into your enjoyment, give it a like. If it missed reversal, give it a dislike. Subscribe for more Ultimate Champion guides coming in the future, and thank you all very much for watching. Until next time everybody, Joshino.